the government has always been in debt and they didn't mind when we were in debt but now the story is that we're in too much debt our debt is going up again because people are living on credit cards which blinds the figures of what's going on now austerity was supposed to be to benefit the country as a whole and it was supposed to take five years but we've had seven years of austerity that the poor people have and the we still owe this massive amount of money yeah. so what's happened to all the money that they've took off us I personally think, even just from working in Thrive, that things have got a lot more harsher and a lot more severe in the last three to four years. Yeah. And I do think a lot of people, the, the poor people, and, and it might sound controversial, as we've talked about before, we're divided. We're divided and we blame other poor people. Well, don't I'll we? let you know now, I'll vote it out. <gasps> yes, yeah, I'll vote it out. A lot of people that did vote out, and I'll say, I wish they'd stay. Um, so what reason? I know, but what reason did you give for voting that? What was what, what drove you to do that? I was just sick of everyone going on about it, so I decided to vote out. Yeah. I do think like there was uh, there's a lot of bureaucracy over there, and I think but to to, to affect any change with that that system, you've got to be in it to to, to yes, make yes, them changes, yes. don't you? And That's I like I personally, I like free movement to labour, and I like them them protection, them employment law protections, and things like that. With austerity, we've seen a, a, a massive cut. To like our local councils, haven't we? So the councils are in a, a, the local authorities are in a difficult position. They're getting less money from central government, and then they have to make some difficult decisions, don't they? How are we going to balance the books here in Stockton? So what are we going to do? And so they've cut services in our area, haven't they? Yeah. They pulled the little old library down in Rosewood and put it in a tiny little building. Yeah. But there's a lot of the community centres. They're all going now. Uh, or the services that they provide are being cut down and they hold a lot of the computers these days for people to use but um, I feel sorry for those people say my age who can't use a computer I mean my husband wouldn't know how to switch one on they pulled down social housing yeah. to build Private housing, no matter how we get away with it, you know, or rent half and buy half and this, that and the other. It is not full social housing. No, no, They've no. took the social housing away. They wanted everybody to buy their own. And when you can't afford it, add cheddar. They've made all these cuts, right? But now you walk into our town centre, Stockton Town Centre, and it is beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and, and, and it's renowned, isn't it? It's the widest high street, am I right? It yeah. Is. Um, they've had a lot of money ploughed into it. You've got them fountains, you've got the steam train that comes up. You've got, it is pretty. I would say it's pretty, isn't it? And it looks lovely. But is that the most important thing when we're struggling to put food on the table here? For some, when somebody has no money, the last thing you want to do is go on down looking at things you can't buy. We were a proud working area of England. Great Britain. All that industry we had and we've lost it all. So we have lost half the engineering that we had. We've lost our shipyards, our um, chemical factories all being split up. I mean we've got problems with the health service, Definitely. problems with the jobs and our young people getting a job, problem with education, problems with um, you know the, the extra price of going to school you know, uniforms yes. and everything else. Um, and we've got, I think, what we've seen over this last couple of years is more and more people going to food banks, which you never really seen. When, when, I know when I first came in at Post of Thrive, going back, what, five years ago, I never ever once had a case come to me in a week that I need a crisis loan and I need a referral to a food bank, never. And now we get them all of the time, most days, every week. And can you remember years ago when Edwina Curry said it's people who have tattoos and dogs that, that use the food banks? Oh, That's because that. we're spending the money on dog food yeah. and to pay for a tattoo. Yeah. 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 I mean, I don't have tattoos and yeah. I've used the food bank. I think what we're witnessing now is not the relative, it's the absolute poverty. People don't have enough money to keep the roof over their head, the food in their belly, and heat and gas and electric. They just don't have that. Now, that is absolute. Well, you see, that's what the English and the Great Britons and 
very good mm. at. We hide it. It's pride as well as the people yeah, don't. It's, it's embarrassing. We shouldn't be having them now. No. Do you know the difference? If you're on benefits, and, and, and most of us in this room have been on benefits, well, probably all of us have been on benefits at one time or another, then you're making that transition to going from benefit into work, and then you're losing out on money. Now, you've got a young family, and you then think, I'm not declaring this this bit now because I'll get my tax credits or my additional tax credits or whatever for an extra couple of weeks before my pay comes in or whatever. It, sometimes it's about you think of, you know it's wrong but you think well actually my immediate problem is I need to feed my kids for the next four yeah. weeks. Yeah. I'm not getting a wage yeah. I am not telling them well, you do, and then yeah. we get the big wrath then, don't we? Yeah, but, but sometimes you're just trying to think, it's not because I think it's right, it's because it's necessity. A sanction is supposed to be if you're not actively seeking work, but the practice is you're sanctioned for a minor infringement, and that minor infringement, nine times out of ten, has not been your fault, it's because they have sent you two different appointment times for two different things, one for your work programme and one for your sign-on date. So we've sorted out why I would say the majority of... Um, benefit fraud happens because they're needy not greedy the needy yeah, yeah. so what happens with all these frauds that are going on when people don't need the money something the Dalai Lama said you don't love objects you love people things go wrong when you love objects and don't love people and to me that is what's happening today money is the God and people are nothing there's another thing, the other things are happening aren't there, in our town, it's about, um, you know, our cuts to our health service as well. You know, we were renowned for that, weren't we? And it was, it, we were looking after our community. Um, but, but at the moment, it's failing us, isn't it? And it's... it's, it's, it's the well, NHS don't. is not failing us, the people that run the NHS. That's what I'm saying, though, but, but then they're allowing that, the, the people that run it are allowing that to happen, so it's not able then to meet our needs, is it? They, no, it, it can't meet our needs. It's not the government's to sell. It's not the government's to give away. It belongs to the people of Britain. And if there's any money to be made, it should come back to us. The, the vision of the, the Poverty Truth Commission is about people being at the heart of the process, those people who were affected by poverty. So it's based on things like the civil rights movement. So you wouldn't have changed things you know, in relation to race if it was ran by middle class white men or women, wouldn't it? So it had to have um, people of that minority group coming together to actually affect that change, same as the feminist movement. That wouldn't have happened, would have, if it was your dad or your brother or your uncle doing it. So at the heart of it is to affect change. <laughs> at the heart of it is, is people in poverty working alongside on an equal footing with the civic and the business leaders of this community to put things into to practice that will have a, a positive impact on people who are, are, are struggling to get by. If you don't speak out, you don't get anywhere, do you?